We are now live on YouTube, starting us up on Rumble, getting the music going. Good morning, hello, and welcome to the State in History, a.k.a. TDH. This show is about what happened to date throughout the annals of recorded history. Join us as we delve into yesteryear, not only for interesting and important happenings, but to possibly even answer questions you do not know you have. Anyway, I am A.O. Xander. King's Refuge. And Honor. Uh, okay. And uh, hopefully we'll be uh, joined by the Golden Loan uh, sooner rather than later. And of course, you viewer, are you, you know, the most important person, you know, in all of us is the viewer, of course, you know, although I guess we're pretty significant because we have to make the dang thing. Uh, but anyway, uh, today is Moon's Day, a.k.a. Monday, August 12, 2024. I almost said 22 for some reason. That's weird. Um, anyway, what do we got here? Good Sir King, you want to start us off in the year three? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the year three, Venus, Jupiter, in conjunction, star of Bethlehem. Ah, huh. so like as we know, like a conjunction. So I guess Venus and Jupiter are lined up, like to form a line between them and the Earth and the Sun. Like that's what a conjunction is, you know. Like a yeah, yeah. And we got one hell of a of a of a jump here. We're going from three to ten ninety nine. <laughs> wow. Like, nothing happened in 1,096 nope. years? What the fuck? <laughs> nothing significant. Sorry. <laughs> I kind of wish I wouldn't have lived in that timeline. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I keep I keep saying I, I'm I'm tired of living in historical times. Yeah. Dude, like, we, like how many world-ending events have we gone through now? Like, did, have, oh my God. have we become a superhero-less, like, Marvel Universe? What the, what's going on? You know, this is, this is some, some bogus crap, you know? Anyway. Yeah. 1099 Battle of Ascalon won by Crusader Army led by Godfrey of Bullion against the Fatimid Force. Last action of the First Crusade. Ooh. Yeah, 1323 Treaty of Nordberg between Sweden and Novgorod, Russia. Regulates the border for the first time. Now that's interesting. Mm, it is interesting. Yeah. Uh, 1336 here we have English King Edward III banned wool export <clears throat> to Flanders. Uh, highly ho neighbor. Uh, later it's granted Flanders. a company... Oh, the damn Flanders. Uh, later... <laughs> Later granted a company of merchants a monopoly on selling wool in an attempt to maximize taxes. Wow! Wow, bruh, that is so evil right there, man. I'm sure you have you have a look on your face that you have something to say about that. <laughs> That's messed up. Yeah. Damn Flanders. Wow. <clears throat> uh, th 1480, we have uh, the Battle of uh, Otranto. Ottoman troops beheaded 800 Christians for refusing to convert to Islam. Huh? Well, I mean, isn't that exactly what's happening in Paris, like, right now? Like, and, uh, England, you know? Europe, really, you know, because Germany's having problems, too? Like, with, you know, this current invasion? I don't know. Uh, 1492, Christopher Columbus arrived in the Canary Islands on his first voyage to the New World. Well, you know, what would become the New World? Oh, so, yeah. Moving on up, what do we have here in the 1500s? 1549, French troops conquer Ambelitus and Pas de Calais, Calais and kill all English prisoners. Whoa. Yeah, that sounds about uh, during the Hundred Years' War. We've just <clears throat> been joined by... Ah, the Golden Loan. Welcome to the show. Uh, welcome, welcome. Yeah. Yeah, we're already up in the 1500s. Wow. Yeah. Oh. How late am I? Uh, about five minutes. You got there quick. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot happened yet. Yeah. 1553, Pope Julius III orders confiscation and burning of Jewish Talmud. Here we go again. What's Why? A Tal you know, what's a Talmud? Uh, the Talmud is one of their religious <coughs> holy books, like how Christianity has the Bible. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Bro. Yeah. Not cool. Yeah. Not cool. Yeah. It, you know, and, and the, the, uh, the Muslims, you know, have the Quran. Uh, you know, the Talmud 
It's but see, this is the different. Well, it's not really much of a difference. It's still a holy book, but the but the Jews have a whole library of holy books. Like uh, I don't know the exact names of them, but you know the Talmud is the most known one. But they have like a good dozen or so that are just as important, you know, or something. Like they have a lot of stuff. So uh, you know, let's not forget the Old Testament at least. You know, that's yeah, that's you know in the Judaism's belief. The New Testament is when you know Christianity did the you know broke off. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, no, like that, that is awful. Like, you know, you, you don't burn books unless it's a neck. Well, I wouldn't burn the Necronomicon because that might actually activate it, you know? Mm. So like, just, just, just Maybe. leave it alone. Yeah. I wonder. Well, I mean, it is something of hell and what is hell known for? You know? Well, books coincide with free speech. So I'm an avid free speecher. So there. Oh, definitely. But the Necronomicon, do you even know what that book is? No. It's basically like, uh, like, like it, it's an unholy book. It's used to like summon demons and place curses and stuff. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's the devil's raise the diary. Dairy. Yeah, yeah, raise the dead. It's the devil's diary essentially, you know. So, but it's an arsonist cookbook for yeah. demon. Yeah. Should be there if it's something created. Should be all there. you know yeah. unnatural things. Well, yeah, if it wasn't there, what you're talking about could come up and bite you in the ass unknowing. Well, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, the Necronomicon, if any book, you know, I would approve to, to burn, it would be that one. But then again, it is a Necronomicon, and by setting it on fire, you might actually activate, you know, it's you know, a demon summoning portal or something. Like, so, just just don't touch the Necronomicon. You know, it's simple. Just don't touch it. Don't burn any books. Yeah, yeah, you just don't burn any books. So. Uh, but what else do we got here? Oh, here we go. 1658? 1658 First American Police Force forms in New Amsterdam. Ooh. And what did New Ooh. Amsterdam become? What? Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm testing you guys. Oh, I failed. Uh, yeah, I failed too. New, New Brunswick? New, New York. York. New York. Uh, New Amsterdam became New York. So thank I you. I know that. Yeah. So, yeah, no, like I've spoken about this a couple of times. I, this dude, oh my God. What? What happened? Okay, this is first. <laughs> I can't. You're not gonna make the connection. I'll make it for you. Now, uh, New York uh, found, founded the police, and now they're. What are they known for now? With yeah. the police? Oh no! I, I was gonna go into that. Like I was just defund gonna get, yeah. defunding them. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No. Like you know, that is an excellent point. Like. Um, it, it's 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 rather ironic that uh, you know the the most anti-policed and yet policed city in the entire nation is <laughs> <laughs> like it's like somehow they're living every extreme possible at once like how yeah like unfortunately we need the police in a utopia you uh, wouldn't even need the police well police only do but, what the citizens you know like you know police really like you know, once again police are only an outsource. Of you know of, of of government that the the general populace as a whole has you know surrendered to you know to our government like people don't police themselves you know so so we outsource that requirement of a functional society to the government like you know very much yeah. like you know how we surrender if everybody had a gun we could stuff. police ourselves I'm sorry yes I'm sorry if everybody had a gun we could police ourselves yeah, yeah well <laughs> there you go yeah. But then you're gonna need a bigger gun. Yeah, well, yeah. or just more skills. Yeah, either way, yeah. At least when you know one idiot decides to be an idiot, he's got twenty other people with a gun around him as well. Yeah, that reminds me of an anime called Kino's Journey that's based off something like that. That's really interesting. There's also Trigun. That's another good anime yeah, that too. involving guns. Trigun was another awesome. good one. That's a that's a classic. Yeah. Classic, yeah. Uh, 1793 here, the Rhone Department was created when the former Department of Rhone et Lawyer <laughs> was split into two, Rhone and Lawyer, or Lier. And I, I want, like, that sounds like, uh, like a, um, anti-monopoly type thing. Like, it sounds like a company. So, you know, 1793, you know, I don't know what, uh, anything about what this is, but that's why it made the cut into the show, because, like, this sounds like something... You know, like relevance. Yeah. You know, 
That would be like, you know, like we were just talking about it the other day, how, or just yesterday, how Google is a monopoly and everything, yeah. you know, and all yeah. like the antitrust movement of the late 90s, you know, they broke up, you know, Pac Bell and Microsoft and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah I they, remember when they uh, broke up uh, AT&T and they were the only, only phone company. Yeah. Yeah. They said, no, this isn't going to work. Well, see, you know, what was really weird is they broke up AT&T by forcing it to split off into different companies. Right. But they still controlled those companies. No. They no, didn't. No, they, they got did. financial it was, it was under compensation. Their, it was under an umbrella. Like, they didn't directly control it, but they had a, a you know, very much like how, how Google uh, made um, Alphabet and how uh, Facebook made Meta. Like, they just made a company that owned them. And then it owned these other companies, so that way they can still control and have a monopoly without being all connected directly in your face. It's, you know, offshoots. That's how, you know, they skirt the laws and everything. But this days. was a mandate from the government, and yeah. they didn't allow them to no, be the umbrella company. They were absolutely divorced from one another. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. They, 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 they didn't own the other companies directly. They were owned by, a, like, they made a company to own themselves... And then own them. No. You see what I'm saying? But the, that's not the fact. That isn't what they did. Huh. Well, you know, that's that's oh. what Google and, and Facebook Okay, well, I'm, not, I'm going back way before yeah. all of that. They, they didn't even exist back in the... the pro, this was probably somewhere in the 70s, I would imagine. Hmm. All right. And it was it's the a, only It's phone a place, phone. Rhone. Oh, Rhone. Uh, originally, the eastern border of Rhone was the city of Lyon itself, so that the... Communes immediately east of Lyon belong to a neighboring department. So department is like states. Okay. With the growth of Lyon, yeah. So it's like a state or a province, a department. So, yeah. So okay, or or a county or something like that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for looking that up. Hey. Uh, what else do we got here in eighteen thirty three? 1833, the town of Chicago is incorporated. Population 350. Now, time out. Didn't we already cover this with a population of 200? And, you know, you even, you know, we spoke about this. You were like, wait a minute, you know. I don't remember. It, it was a couple days ago. I just don't remember. Wow. I don't have a recall of it. Wow. Well, like, hold on a second. Like, let me bigger this really quick. So, uh, was it? It was a couple days ago, right? Maybe well, I, I'm not, I don't particularly remember. Well, uh, let me let me look at uh, 10th of August here. So let's let's go back to okay 1830. <clears throat> Hold on a second, 18. Yeah, 1833, Chicago. Uh, not Chicago. August 10th, two days ago, Chicago incorporates as a village of about 200. Oh. Oh, that's wow. right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, that's right. Now so, I remember. So what the hell? How can it? It almost. Is, like it, is this a, a different third Chicago? In size. Yeah. 1833, 1830. Yeah, so it's the same year. So two days later, they had an additional 150 people. Are these two different Chicagos? Maybe they decided to expand the borders or something. Yeah, but then they would be expanding. Not You, you can't incorporate after you've incorporated. Can you? <laughs> like... Whoops, never mind. Two days. What are you doing two days, though, or whatever it is? Mm. Yeah, no, no. Like, this right here is yeah. on the 10th, and this yeah, is today, no. the 12th. So yeah. two days. I don't know. Which one is right? What are, Or are these? Are there multiple Chicago's? Which one is you, it? Y yeah, it doesn't say Illinois on either of them. Well, so, well so pop on that other one, see if they have and now, additional to say. There are multiple Chicago's you. now. Uh, well, what I can do, actually, is when was Chicago, Illinois, uh, Incorporated. You can go straight to March 4th. What the hell? 18, 4, 1837. So we are off by months and years. What is yeah. going on? What's happening? <laughs> Something's wrong somewhere. Yeah. Okay. You know, this, this is, did, did, is this some kind of like quasi multi level Mandela effect? Like. Like Spider-Man into the multiverse crap? Like what's happening? Like I, I'm, I'm getting, I'm kind of getting scared here. Uh, let's move on into 1851. Uh, U.S. inventor Isaac Singer patented the sewing machine. Oh, of course. But yeah, the Singer. Yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, five years later, 1856, Anthony Foz of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, was granted a second patent for improvements to the accordion, 
Patent number 15511A. All right. So imp improvements to the accordion. What, destroy it? Like it's still not any good, so yeah. what did he do to make it better? I don't know. I don't know. If, if he made it better, how, how bad would, did it sound before? Yeah. Yikes. I just never, I've always remembered, I was pretty young, some door-to-door -door salesman came by, yeah, start your kids playing the accordion, you know, it's all good for their whatever. <laughs> Boy, did they get a, a loud protest from my brother and I. That's really funny because that's how, uh, uh, well, according to um, uh, the movie, which they took a lot of creative liberties, so it's not it's completely, it's not historically accurate really by any means, but it is inspired by history. But the story of Weird Al Yank Yankovic, it starts with an accordion salesman going door to door <laughs> and uh, his dad, like, you know, like freaks out and, and all that stuff. And it, it, like, I, you know, I, I don't want to spoil anything. If anybody hasn't seen it after this video, of course, go watch uh, uh, like Weird Al, the Yankovic story, I think it's called. Have you seen it, King? No. Oh, well, we got to watch it. I haven't seen it. It's the it's, one with uh, Harry Potter, dude? Uh, yeah, I think he's in there. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe. He is, he is Weird Al. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, it is him. Yeah, it is Daniel Radcliffe. Dan Daniel, there we go. Yeah. Daniel Radcliffe. I, I only remember his name uh, because of Radcliffe from Pocahontas, the, the cartoon movie. Mm. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, like uh, so that must have been a thing uh, door to door uh, accordion salesman. Yeah, well, that's why I'm making this such a point. Your, like pitching to have your kids take accordion lessons. Yeah, they weren't selling accordion, although they probably would sell you an accordion yeah. also. Well, you know, if you're if you're gonna take yeah. lessons, you're gonna practice at home, and how else are you gonna practice at home? Like now, they're selling you lessons and equipment. You know, double hit, boom, boom, money, yeah. money, money. You know, but or they'll rent you one for a while. Well, you know, and, <laughs> and then sell you one. Yeah. But you know, but that's that's strange. So I wonder if that was actually a thing, a door to door accordion salesman. Sounds like it. I mean I, I was mean, it, it happened to me, so uh, I mean, my parents. I mean, hell, for a while I was a door to door meat salesman. True. You know? I, I, I legitimately like sold meat, you know, like like you know, cuts of steak, fish, you know, lobster, chicken. Have it pork. delivered to your door. Yeah. All sorts yeah. of stuff. So Anyway, what else do we got here? Uh, 1863, we have first cargo of lumber left Burrard Inlet in Vancouver, British Columbia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 1865. Good Sir King. Give me a second. Okay. Uh, British surgeon Joseph Lister performed the first antiseptic surgery using carbonic spray on instruments and bandages. So, uh, sterilizing uh, the utensils. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Before they cut into your flesh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 1867, U.S. President Andrew Johnson defied Congress, suspending Secretary of War Edwin Stanton. Huh. Huh. Hmm. There's more to that story, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. It's just, like, you know, really interesting. That he, that yeah. He's just like, you know what, I don't care. This guy's gone. Like, you know, like, like what did, what did this well, it guy... it must have been something, because it should have been under his cabinet. He can do whatever he wants, but defying Congress, you wonder why. And this is shortly after the end of the Civil War. Maybe, you know, that was it, too. Like, they weren't at war anymore, so they, he suspended it. He's a Secretary of War. They're not a state at war. So there you go. Your job is no longer required. Maybe that's well, the reason. Uh, let's see. Is he suspending the guy, or is he expending the Secretary's... Uh, well, he's, he suspended the guy, but if you're suspending the title, then you're suspending the guy, too. So, well, there's a big difference between uh, suspending the title... And suspending the guy. Suspending the guy, Congress should have nothing to say about it. If he's trying to do away with the Secretary of War position, then Congress would have something to say about it. I don't know. That's going to require some digging. Yeah. Like, if anybody watching this, you know, wants to, you know, do some research and, you know, let, let us and everybody else know in the, you know, comments section, that'd be fantastic. So... Um, but anyway, uh, we got another one here. 1869, I'm... I, I, I would vote for this guy. Honestly, I, I, I think that you know we should honor what this guy said. What is it? Well, um, we'll see. <laughs> King. Uh, okay. Uh, Self-proclaimed Emperor Joshua Abraham Norton 
of the USA. So, you know, this guy, like, you know, he had, like, you know, some, like, he, he was crazy, or, or so they say, but he was a self-proclaimed emperor of the United States of America. Oh, really? Like, he, he proclaimed himself, and, like, there's a whole story around him and all that stuff, and I don't really want to get into it and all that stuff, but, like, you know, but, but people, people paid him taxes and all that stuff. Like, there, there's a whole thing. It was fantastic. But anyway, self-proclaimed Emperor Joshua Abraham Norton of the USA issued an edict abolishing the Democratic and Republican parties. Oh. I think we should obey our emperor. <laughs> huh, you know? Like, you know, they got to go. One way or another, you know, those parties got to go. Both of them. Uh, 1877, to his amazement, Thomas Edison recorded himself reciting Mary Had a Little Lamb on his just-completed cylinder phonograph, a device that recorded sound into tinfoil cylinders. Um, so, you know, as we all know, yeah. you know, Edison a is a monster, yeah. but, yeah. uh, Edison, very... so let's see if I can find the actual, because somebody, for posterity, they actually recorded it. So, like, you know, this is the actual, this is his real voice, I believe. Hold on, a moment. The uh, first words I spoke in the original phonograph. Uh, a little piece of practical poetry. Mary had a little lamb, it screeched with white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. That is yeah. one of the first instances of audio recording ever. Yeah. yeah. Ever in all of history. Probably is the first. Yeah. You know, well, the first that's left, anyway. If the record hasn't been destroyed or anything, because you know those are those are made of clay, you know, and and and, and crap. Said tin foil. Um, cylinder photograph, a device that recorded sound onto tin foil cylinders. All right, hold on a second. Phonograph. Like I think they're clay lined with with foil, maybe. Um, well, that's quite a bit later. Everything we're looking yeah. at there. Uh, hold on a second. Phonograph cylinder. It's just, it's giving me the phonograph though, but not the cylinder. Oh, uh, here we go. So yeah, you see how it, that, that doesn't look like foil, that's clay. But, but maybe the original well, this was is the original. foil. Yeah. This is what he yeah. hand did, obviously. Let me do 1877 here really quick. Okay. Oh, I see, yeah, so this it's is. It's still far more sophisticated than what he did originally. And I'm sure this stuff came around. No, very this quickly. is the original one. This says 1877. Oh, this really? is the this is what he recorded it on. So, oh, yeah. That looks pretty sophisticated. Well, that's it. Okay. Like, I mean, the title says "Phonograph Cylinder Created by Thomas Edison, 1877." Okay. I mean, you know. Yeah. I don't know what Enough else. Enough said. Yeah. Um, or maybe this is just part of it because, like, we have a longer device here. Look at all that. So. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's restart the music. Going to move on up here into 1879. Uh, the first National Archery Association tournament was held in Chicago. Mm. All right. Where they were incorporated, we think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which Chicago? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do we got here in 1883, King? Okay, 1883, the last... Waga zebra species with less slashes dies at the Artist Magistra Zoo in Amsterdam. So let's see if I can get a picture of this. So Quagga, 1883. So wow, these are. This looks weird. Look at that. That's an interesting, you know, yeah. pattern. Like white on the bottom, brown on the top, and then like zebra head. Yeah, that's. It comes with like kind of like a Wi-Fi signal thing going on there. Oh, cool. Uh, 1884. 1884. Bill Murdoch scores first Test cricket double century 211 at the Oval. The Oval. Cricket. <laughs> hey, I, I had to put something in there, you know. <laughs> like. I knew you were going to be here today, and you know, I just really uh, enjoy oh, torturing you. Thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, like, I, I'm a good son. I, I, I think of you, you know? I, I consider you it's in my hard actions. It's to put good and torture together. I'm sorry. Uh, that depends on your outlook. Maybe it's you good know? for you. <laughs> 
What else do we got? Uh, 19, wait. Uh, 1888, Bertha, wife of inventor Carl Benz, made first motor tour. Ah. So, you know, like, anybody out there, you know, who, like, you know, unironically actually believes that, you know, anything Mm -hmm. negative involving women and driving, the first motor tour was conducted by a woman. So, eat your heart out, sexist. <laughs> yeah. Like, legitimate, actual sexist, not to sound like a, a leftoid or anything, you know. Like, yeah. Uh, ooh, just one decade later, what happened? 1898, Hawaii is formed, annexed to U.S. Formally annexed. Yeah. Formally annexed to U.S. Yeah. Oh, welcome, Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The way we we got them was extremely disgusting, but yeah. and now they're a blue state. So sucks. That sucks. Uh, what else uh, happened at that time? Eighteen ninety-eight peace protocols and Spanish-American War signed. So the end of the Spanish-American War. Yeah, yeah. Which a lot of people yeah. don't, you know, like they they call the Korean War the Forgotten War. I think that Spanish-American War is more forgotten than Korea. You know. Well. Yeah, and we like, don't, don't think about it all. We just get skipped over in history for some reason. Yeah. You're talking about Korea, right? No, this is yeah, yeah, this. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, like, I, there's been several YouTube videos. Uh, there's one in particular I remember they were talking about, like, I had no idea the United States had a war with Spain. Like, yeah, yeah they did, yeah. you know? But the Korean War was never officially a war. It was a police action. That's the formal well, term of it. Technically, neither we didn't was call the, it a Korean War, but technically, at the time they considered it a police action. Well, technically, the same goes for Vietnam because I don't think we ever declared war on Vietnam formally. I, I believe you're right. You know, so that's why I always call it the Vietnam conflict. In fact, we were so. yeah. In fact, we were there on behalf of what we recognized as Vietnam. We were trying to protect them. Yeah. So uh, no, we wouldn't have declared war on. Them. Yeah. And we also uh, North Vietnam. We did not. It, because there was a North and a South Vietnam there at the time. Now yeah. it's just Vietnam. Yeah, and actually, in order to declare war on North Vietnam, we would have to accept that they're a sovereign nation to exist to declare war on to begin with. True. You know? True. And that would give them validity and even more political power. So, yeah. A little tidbit of information a lot of people don't know. Uh, moving on up into the 1900s, 1908, Henry Ford's company built the first Model T car. Mm. Yep. 1914, we have a cavalry, cavalry battle at Helen, Belgium, uh, known as the Battle of the Silver Helmets. That's an interesting name. It is. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to look this up here really quick. You know, that's like that's, that's almost like, you know, my War of the Buttons you yeah. know, from my book. Uh, the Battle of Helen. Um, uh, because of the many cavalry helmets left behind on the battlefield by the German uh, cuirassiers, uh, took place on August 12, 1914, at the beginning of the First World War, uh, between German forces led by George von der Marwitz and Belgian troops led by Leon de Witt. The name of the battle alludes to the Battle of the Golden Spurs in 1302, where 500 pairs of Golden Spurs were recovered from the battlefield. Wow! Hmm. That's a whole different battle, like way before, you know, 1302. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, but Helen uh, was a small market uh, town in a... Con- in a convenient river crossing of the Getz and was situated on the principal axis of advance of the Imperial German Army. The battle was a Belgian tactical victory, but did little to delay the German invasion of Belgium. So, like, it, the, the name of this battle was inspired by, you know, the Battle of the Golden Spurs. Now this is the Battle of the Silver Helmets. Like, wow. Yeah. Th- this is turning into, like, Minecraft armor. Like, you know, next up we're going to have the Battle of the Diamond Chess Piece. You know? <laughs> so... Uh, but what else do we got here? Uh, 1915, a good Sir King. Uh, human Bondage by S- William Somerset Mockham, published. I believe that involves slavery, uh, not the other bondage that everybody most likely probably immediately thought of. Um, but the, the bondage as in bonds, yeah. you know, yeah. you're, you're yeah, a slave. Yeah. 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 
of Human Bondage is a 1950 novel by, you know, W. Somerset Mugham. The novel is generally agreed to be Mugham's masterpiece and to be strongly anti uh, uh, strongly autobiographical in nature, although he stated, quote, this is a novel, not an autobiography, though much of it is autobiographical, more is pure invention, end quote. Uh, so the plot, uh, be, you know, well, it's just telling us the plot and everything, but, but what's it about? Um, it's not telling us what. Uh, genre Bile Dung's Roman? What the hell is that? I mean, that's a weird genre of book. Mm -hmm. I never heard of that. Um, but uh, it's, it's not telling us like the, the, the basic thing. So I still think it has I've something to do with book, slavery. That's for sure. You've heard of the book? I've ho I have heard of it. Okay. But I can't tell you anything about it. Huh. I just know of human bondage. I know that. It's like a documentary. Yeah. Well, I wonder what it's about. Like, I, I'm still, I still, you know, think it's about slavery, but maybe it's, well, they're talking about romance and sex here, so maybe it is the actual bondage everybody immediately thought about. Maybe I'm wrong. It, check so. the thesis of it. Uh, where, where's the thesis? I don't know where the thesis, I, I would type it in the bar. Okay. That's the word I was thinking for. Thesis. Thank you. Well, it's just giving me the wiki again. Um, well, it, this is this is turning into a dig here, so we got to move on up. If anybody can figure this out, you know, once again, comment section. I'd be you know very much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, what do we got here in 1916? <coughs> Pablo Picasso, Max Jacob, Moyes, Kingsling, Orient. Ortiz and Pacrit are photographed in Paris. Nice. Yeah, the guy on the left looks like John Lennon. A little bit. He kind of looks yeah. like he kind of looks like he's wearing some kind of superhero helmet mask situation thing. Like the, the, on the far on the far right, like the you far, see the, yeah, the yeah. headband. I'm about the other guy. Uh, uh, the far left. On the far left. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, he has the bowl cut and everything. Uh, 1918, uh, oh, why don't you take it, and then I'll take 20s. 1918, World War One allies defeat Germans at the Battle of Amens, the last great battle on the Western Front. All right. Yeah, the war is wrapping up here. Yeah. Like, uh, like, it's it, uh, November 11th, you know, the 11th yeah. hour of the 11th day yeah. of the 11th month. Uh, 1922, the dedication of Frederick Douglass' home in Washington, D.C. as a national shrine. Uh, shrine seems a little too much, but, you know, definitely needs to be immortalized somehow. But I don't know, he's pretty... As a place of worship, though? Well... You know, that's, that seems a little much. You he know, needs to be recognized far more than he is in our, in our American yes, history. Yes, but not as a deity, you know? No. Like, well, I don't think they're praying to him. Yeah, you know, at least I hope not. Like, um... But you know, well, a national shrine just means it's preserved. Yeah, it doesn't mean deity. Well, a shrine is usually some place where you go to pray, right? Like you know, a shrine. Like well, the, we know. we connect that with it, but it's not necessarily that. Hmm. Maybe maybe I don't really know fully what a shrine is. I don't know. So okay, but you know, definitely it needs to be immortalized. You know, absolutely, I agree on that on that part. You know, like you well, know. unfortunately, not many people know of them. The general, as far as the general public is concerned. Well, not many people know about, um, um, oh, God, what, what's her name? Uh, <laughs> That's why we don't know. It's what's her name? No, no, no. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, uh, woman, black, uh, suff no, not suffragist, uh, uh, under uh, Parks? Brown. You talking about uh, what's her name? Parks? No, no, not Ro not Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, her Har Harriet Tubman. Mm. Harriet Tubman. I, I, it was it was some weird name. That's why I couldn't think of it. It's like it was like, like, like you know, like yeah, so, something. I thought there was a G in there. I, I'm trying to think of something with a G. You know, like 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 glass or something. You know, uh, Harriet Tubman. No, not many people know about her. No. Uh, not many people know about uh, Mother Teresa. 
you know, who, yeah. who literally in her first four years, like when she was four years old, because she was she was born in um, in the Ottoman Empire, what in the section that would become Turkey, I believe, or, or somewhere. It, it, I know she was born in the Ottoman Empire, and when she was four years old, World War One broke out. So no mm-hmm. wonder she was a strong advocate for peace. Her in child, her entire childhood was war, you know, on the front lines. I so. would be far more excited than a Black History Month to interject and, and really highlight a lot of the really good <coughs> black things that have happened in our history and get them in our books for every day. Yes, like we should stop having segregated history months because black history as... But it has to be simultaneously emphasized. Yes, with everybody. More than it well, is. I mean, like, you know, the whole uh, the interview with... Um, was it... Was it uh, Samuel, no, it wasn't Samuel L. Jackson. It was uh, Morgan Freeman. Well, he, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I don't know, want a Black History Month. Yeah. He, Do you he, want a Jewish History Month with the guy? He goes, well, no. Yeah, exactly. No, because Black History is American history. It's American you know, like history. we are all one. You but know? We have to expose it more. Yes. And, and it, you know, I don't know what they're doing in schools today, but. From what I had, oh, there was no don't. Black History involved in any of our re- any of our readings. Yeah, they do that. They do Black History Month a lot yeah. during school projects. It's very annoying. Do they still teach CRT? CR what now? S- Critical oh. race theory. Oh, that expl- That answers my question. He doesn't even know what it is. So that's good. At least they don't do that crap anymore. That was a fast stint. Um, but no, like I think I learned about George Washington. That'd be called something else. Yeah. Well. Um, I think I learned about George Washington Carver, you know, the inventor of peanut butter, and as well as like thousands of other uses for the peanut. Yeah. You know, and, you know, incredibly amazing botanist that guy. So. Didn't know in, that. In school, yeah. Yeah. I learned about that from Family Guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, American Dad did a whole thing behind that about like a peanut conspiracy and you know, like. Yeah. Like yeah. The only peanut oh. farmer I know of is Jimmy Carter. Yeah, Jimmy Carter. Anyway, what do we got here in uh, two, in uh, 1923? Uh, Enrico Tyra Bushi is the first to swim English Channel westward. Ah, so westward. so yeah. So I wonder, like, you know, if if you know, like, what's the currents, you know, in the English Channel? Does it always go from like, you know? Well, that's why I'm saying westward. I wonder what that it, means. It, yeah. Well, it means they're going west. Yeah, I know. So I'm wondering, like, you know, if he's the first, and to you know, do it westward, westward. So that so means what was it done before? How was it done before? Well, eastward, and that has to be with the currents, you know, because it's easier. I don't know. I, I don't really know what that means. That, that, that makes sense. Point. Well, I mean, like, if he's the first to do it westward, then he's not the first to do it. Period. Otherwise, it would say so. Yeah. And you wouldn't do something the harder way if you're the first one. You would do it the easiest way. You know. I got all that, but it's kind of weird. I don't know what that means. Is I mean, what I'm saying. I think it's a, because it's against the, the direction current. he's going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the direction he's going, and I think that's against the current. That's why he's the first <clears> one to do it successfully, at least. Well, currents um, do ebb and flow. Yes. High tide, low tide. You know. Yeah. You know, but like, yeah, you know, is it is it like you know, seventy thirty? Like, you know, what's the I, percentages? I don't know. Like, I don't know, I don't know the current of the English statement. Channel. It's a weird statement. Yeah. What else do we got? Uh, Terra Flaw, nineteen twenty-five. The Terra Flaw comes into force in Germany, setting up tariffs for industry and agricultural based on pre-war rates. Oh, okay. So they're getting back to how things were uh, prior to the outbreak of the Great War, the war to end all wars, mm-hmm. or the war to start all wars, I guess. Because technically, yeah. when you think about it, we're still in the political strife of, of, of you know, the First World War over a, a hundred years later. Because, you know, World War One led into World War Two, that led into the Cold War, you know, and then... How even, do you draw the line that, that is still on today? Just the political tensions... And all the stuff that's going on, you know, and now Russia invading Ukraine, you know, that happened a while ago and all that stuff. Yeah, like, but it's and all, it's now. Like the whole world is now in a nuclear, you know, like hovering. Allies are now them. enemies and yeah. vice versa and everything is flip-flopped. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you know, uh, both World War One and World War Two, Italy changed sides. Yeah. So, you know, if, if we can allow that during the actual combat fighting, you know, like, because cause what, you know. Is war only in the fighting, or is it in the politics that led to it, you know, like... Well, you fight, and then you go back to politics. 
You start with politics, fight, go back to politics. Yeah. But then, like, you know, then we have the Cold War, which is all politics. We, there was no fighting, really. You know? Yeah. But it's... I don't know. The English language is weird. So many things can be interchanged. Uh, moving on up to 1927, Wings, one of the only two silent films, the other being The Artist in 2011, uh, t to win an Oscar for Best Picture, open starring Clara Bow, outstanding picture of 1929, so two years later. Yeah. So one of only two silent films to get an Oscar. That's really interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the other being The Artist in 2011. So 2011 they made a silent movie. That is astonishing. That's an artistic choice. Well, what I don't understand is I don't know when they're giving Oscars, but at one time there was only silent movies. Well, yeah. But well, when when w did the Oscars start? When did the Oscars? <laughs> Pardon me. 1929 it says here. But wait. Well, that's the first Academy Awards. So... When were the first Oscars? Well, they, uh, the, the Academy Awards are presenting Oscars. Huh. Oscars, the statue. Well, then how can how can Wings get an Oscar? Oh, well, well that, never mind. Never mind. I, I'm stupid. It says here, Outstanding Picture of 1929. So Wings, Wings came out in 1927, two years prior. But right. then in the first Oscars, Wings got it. Yeah. Okay, now I understand. All right. And then later on, you know, the artist and that got out in 2011 also won an Oscar. Yeah. You know, only, you know, two silent movies. Anyway, 1928, the ninth Summer Olympic Games closed in Amsterdam, uh, Netherlands. All right. Uh, 1930, Clarence Birdseye was granted a patent for method or uh, for a method for quick freezing food. Patent U.S. Uh, 17730798. You know, and we all know about you know bird's eye foods and all that stuff. Yeah, all the now, frozen section, the peas and the corn and all that stuff. Now, there's a side note, and I hope I'm accurate. I may be dead wrong, but it's in my memory. Uh, bird's eye's daughter took over his entire empire. Unheard of for a woman to do it. Uh -huh. The board of directors thought she was going to be the you know the, the figurehead, and they had run everything for her. And she shot him down real quick and ran the whole damn thing. Yeah, very successful. Uh -huh. And. Uh, she ended up uh, uh, building Mar-a-Lago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's why you told me that story. Yeah. So, that's interesting. Yeah, so, so and because Trump didn't build it, he, he's like not... He bought it. No, he bought yeah, it. Yeah, he's not original resident. No, of course not. So... Well, he was there way before he was born. Yeah, yeah. So, well, that's, that's really interesting. So, you know, the daughter of... You know, Clarence Bird's she eye. She was the heiress yeah, the, of the empire. Yeah. And she ended up, but she bought a lot of companies. I think she bought Bird's Eye, if I'm not mistaken. Whatever whatever empire she had, it became under her umbrella. Yeah, so that's that's a really interesting time. So I'm not sure that the heiress was actually her, his daughter. I, may be, I think I'm wrong there. I think she bought the company from him. Yeah. And kept him on, and he became part of it. So now audience whenever you go to the market and you buy you know f you know a, a bag of frozen vegetables you can think of trump <laughs> <laughs> a bag or frozen well i mean the the, the marilago connection i get it i'm saying are you why are you trying to besmirch my comparison <laughs> here i'm trying to do something I, good I, you're shitting all over what you're thinking. are you thinking he's a bag or are you thinking he's frozen no i'm thinking of yeah. marilago <laughs> oh, my god uh, <laughs> Help me, King. What would you got here in 1936? <laughs> hey, Pete, how you doing, bro? 1936? Yeah. 120 degrees. Seymour, Texas. Mm. State record, yeah. A warm day. Yeah, it is a warm day. Oh, you got uh, three more 36s. Oh, yeah. uh, after 23 year absent, a baseball demonstration game is played between two American teams at Berlin Olympics. World champions beat U.S. Olympics 6 to 5. Ah. So that's a long absence, you know, 24 I, years? So, yeah, well, yeah. is that for yeah. the Olympics is what they're saying? Uh, is well, absence from, absent from the Olympics? 
After 24 year absence of baseball demonstration games, so baseball demonstration period okay. in Olympics. So for a while, like they yeah. took it out and then they yeah. put it back in, and then the the uh, the U.S. team dominated. Well, it didn't dominate, but but won. So, but they brought it back. <laughs> and not, I'm going to go back 20 years or whatever. They seem to, seems to me they brought baseball back into the Olympics. Yeah, this is when. No, but way way after this, I'm talking about in the 90s or something. Well, maybe it happened. Maybe it did. Like I don't know. Like, yeah, uh, I can't. Re- yeah, I'm just I, I remember. And the only thing I remember is the Dodgers manager back then, whatever his name was, famous Dodger uh, manager. He managed the uh, baseball team, and I think it was coming back into the Olympics at that time. It's uh, really sketchy what I'm remembering. Reintroduction of baseball into Olympics. Let's see if this yields any results here. Seven, can- seven canceled or reintroduced Olympic sports. Was that 08? A little bit further down. Something in 08. Which would be uh, about the- no, that's Baseball and softball return in 2028. So that's the one upcoming in L.A. Yeah. So it's going to come back again. So, so golf- apparently it's not an, a, a permanent sport. It skeleton sledding. What the hell is skeleton sledding? Rugby. Tug, tug of war? Are you kidding me? Uh, baseball and softball. Okay, so they have... Uh, they have the 1936 that we just talked about. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, it was announced in 2016 that baseball and softball would both return to Olympic status for the 2020. So baseball yeah. and softball did come back in 2020. Maybe that's so, what I'm thinking of, yeah. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Baseball was added as an official Olympic sport in 1992. Okay, that's, so, pro- that's what I'm thinking of right ever that was. That That's more like it's farther back to 2020. Okay, so so they added it as an official, so not just for that season. Is that baseball or softball? So hold on a second. Finally, baseball was added as an official Olympic sport in 1992 with its sister softball joining four years later, so in 1996. Okay. Later in 2012, however, both baseball and softball were dropped. Okay, there um, you go. There and then go. it came back in 2020. So so yeah. make up your mind, Olympics. So yeah, I'm know? thinking of the 92 when it came back. Yeah, it came. it's come back three times now. Well, it's... Yeah. It's come into it three times, come back twice. And the uh, break dancing they had in the Olympic system, oh my God. they're not going to have it here in L.A. I thank <laughs> God. Dude, we were just watching videos about that. Oh, jeez. Yes. Like. Yeah, but do you see how athletic those guys are? I don't care. They look like they're having an epileptic seizure. You know, they're up there on stage like. Oh. Come on. Come on. What, come on. what the hell is that? Appreciate these guys. Appreciate right, what? Man. For we'll looking like Trump yeah, walking that they one guy? Like, they are super athletic. I don't care. Like, it's a, you see these guys doing How the hell do they do that? They look like they're having how a... Do they, how do they stand with their feet up in the air okay. on their elbow, you know? All right. That's cool. They, they they look athletic. Yes. Well, so does someone having a seizure. He's, you know, oh, uh, come you on. Know, come come on. on. <laughs> it was awful. It was awful. <laughs> like, Guy puts in a life work, and you're calling it awful. Actually, uh, we have a, a, a small tidbit here uh, from Pete's. Uh, Mar-a-Lago was built by the heiress of the Post family, not That's Bird's right. Eye. Yeah, no, but she they own Bird's Eye is what I... Ah. I corrected myself later. Okay. Yeah, she was the heiress of the Post. The okay. Post bought Bird's Eye. Okay, okay. Yeah, and when it was floundering, I mean, he came up with this, and the problem was no one had freezing capabilities to buy his stuff. Ah. And she saw the vision of it and bought it. All right. And kept him on. He was still on the pro- probably owned a percentage of it. So yeah, I corrected myself later when we were talking that it wasn't uh, her father. It was. Oh uh, uh, yeah, it wasn't. It, 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 it was family. Yeah. Yeah. So so she was not related. Right. Okay. But she bought bird's eye. But you can still think of Mer- of, of Trump when you buy frozen vegetables. She owned that part of it. Yeah, but yeah. I was wrong. It was post. Absolutely yeah. right. And you can also think of Trump whenever you buy that cereal too. Now you know mm-hmm. post cereal. So. Or crackers, or any of that. Yeah. Post is huge. Yeah. So, uh, what else do we got here? Um, 1936. Uh, the gymnastics competition at the Berlin Olympics concluded with Germany dominating, winning six of nine gold medals, including the men and women's teams events. Awesome. Yeah. And we also have 1939, a sabotage suspected in city of San Francisco train crash, which derailed near Harney, Nevada, killing 24. Wow, so they, they suspect sabotage for that. Mm. So, uh, 1940, Luftwaffe bombed British radar stations, lost 31 aircraft, you know, while doing so. And we also have Netherlands started rationing textiles for the war. Sure, you know, of course. So, 
Uh, but gotta what do we? Uniforms. Yep. Uh, what do we got here in 1941? Uh, French Marshal Philippe Pétain gives full support to Nazi Germany. Yeah, he's Ooh. the one that they put in charge of Vichy France, southern France. Mm. So yeah. And actually, like a little bit of information, I, I I'm not sure how accurate I am, and I don't even know how to find this, but I saw a video a long time ago. Um, and this guy, this Philippe Paton, uh, was actually um, uh, in charge of uh, of like a certain like area of like French military or whatever. Like you know, he was a French general, so you yeah. know he was in charge of something. But he was in charge specifically of this one area. Uh, France had the ability to knock Germany out in the early parts of World War II. When Germany went and invaded Poland and all that stuff. They didn't really have, you know, like much left over, you know, for defense. Right. And France was actually thinking about invading Germany and knocking them out while they were busy over in Poland. Mm. And this guy is the one who said no. Yeah. This MFer is the one who said no. And then he went on to being a good little puppet of Germany. What a what a piece of crap. You know? This guy could have could have Changed all the he history. Probably, well, he was probably worried about retaliation if it didn't work. And all yeah. That. So he had no balls. What can I tell you? Yeah, no balls. You know. But then, you know, later on, he was the same guy that they put in charge of Vichy France. You know, as it says here. So. Well, who who put him in charge? The Germans. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, makes so, sense. So you know, there's all these conspiracies that you know he was actually like you know a, a sympathizer and a spy and all that jazz. And such. Well, they probably so, put him in charge because they recognized he was what controllable. Yeah, yeah, he was a he was a you know a pansy. Uh, but let's see here. Jacob Pete says, "Fun fact: Did you know the carrots improve your vision thing originated as a British propaganda to uh, obfuscate they had aircraft mounted radar?" Uh, I did not know that. I thought mm. the I thought because because the whole thing about they're good for your eyes is a myth. I yeah. thought that originated to get people to eat more vegetables. Just to, you know, I had no idea about the uh, the radar thing. That's kind of cool. But so. you, you, the old joke, you know, you know how carrots are good for your eyes? But don't bump. Have you ever seen a rabbit with glasses? Yeah. Hold on a second. Good for eyes. A S D F. I, I, I have to play this. Sorry. Like, here. Hey, did you know that carrots are good for your eyesight? You lied to me. As Death movie. <laughs> you lied to me. You lied to me. <laughs> As Death movie was <clears throat> hilarious. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 1942. British Prime Minister Winston Church Churchill arrives in Moscow for a conference with Joseph Stalin and U.S. Representative W. Averill Her Harriman. That's really interesting. This is uh, like in the early stages of us, uh, like I, you know, before we're allied with them, mm -hmm. like because you know, like Russia was their own thing, the Allies were their own right. thing, and you know, the and the Axis were their own thing. Yeah. You know, and then Russia, you know, Russia worked with Germany to invade Poland and everything, but then Germany, you know, invaded Russia, right? And then Russia's just like that was what a big screw up, really. Yeah, and then Russia, you know, eventually joined us because we had a common enemy, Japan. Yeah. You know. Well, it, Germany. Well, well, Germany. Yes, of course. But like Russia was already fighting Japan because Japan yeah. was was well, that attacking goes back. everybody. Yeah, that goes back to the thirties. Yeah, you know. So, uh, but yeah, well, you know, a lot, a lot of crazy politics stuff. You know, ping ponging well, around back go. and forth. Warm politics. You yeah, know? you know, it reminds me a hell of a lot how Discord operates. War is <laughs> always know? about politics. Yeah. Uh, what else do we got here? This 1943 one is what is really, really raised my eyebrow. 1943 alleged date of the first Philadelphia experiment test on United States Navy ship USS Eldridge. I'm going to repeat what he said. The first <coughs> Philadelphia experiment insinuating multiple. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know about the Philadelphia experiment, whether or not you believe it or so, but people have heard about it. Yeah. But it's not. There's not only one, so that's like, huh, hey, you know, like, mm. yeah. Uh, 1994 or not, not, 1944, a pipeline under the ocean, Pluto, began operating. I guess a Pluto pipe or whatever. I don't know what that means or anything. Oh. What were they piping? 
Uh, you know what? I'm going to just look up the entire article to answer your question. To see, It has to be oil, you know? I would think, yeah. Oh, Operation Pluto. Okay, so that's why it's called Pluto. Uh, Operation Pluto, pipeline under the ocean or pipeline under tr transportation of oil. There we go. Okay, there it is. Oh, there we go. Pipeline under transportation of oil, Pluto. Pluto. Oh, there you go. There we go. Like OPEC. It always stands for something. Yeah, well, you know how the government loves their alphabet, you know, numbers yeah. and everything, so... Uh, 1944 as well, Waffen SS troops massacred 560 people in St. Anna de Strazima. No idea where that is, but, you know, no. it doesn't matter. It was awful everywhere. So, uh, 1945, Emperor Hirohito of Japan informed the Imperial family that he has decided to surrender. So. Yeah. Yep. Unconditionally. Yep. Uh, what do we got here in 48? Ah, uh, 1948 Cleveland Indian get, get, wait, Cleveland Indians get 29 hits in a nine-inning game. Wow. Boy, that's a lot. Yeah, I thought it was. That's why I put it in there. It's over three hits like an inning. Yes. Yeah. They should have given us wow. the final score. Huh. <clears throat> what else have we got in 48? Mm. You got several of these, actually. Court of Justice sentence General Frederick Christensen command to the German Wehrmacht in the Netherlands to 12 years imprisonment. Oh, yeah. Yep. So that was Ooh. their uh, German trials. War trials. Yeah. Yeah, the, the German Wehrmacht. That, that's the, <coughs> I think the Wehrmacht was like the general infantry. And I have so, no idea. Yeah. Got a baseball yeah. one, it looks like here. No, it's not baseball. It's hockey. Uh, 1948, Indian maestro Balbar Singh Dosak scores twice as India beats Great Britain 4-0 for the field hockey gold medal at the London Olympics, India's fourth consecutive Olympic hockey title. Wow, I would have never Ooh. thought India played hockey. Like, field. Yeah. Field. Yeah. Field hockey, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Field hockey, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like they play like you know rugby, they play uh, cricket, you know. Yeah. Um, football. Um, and apparently, field, field hockey. hockey. Yeah. Uh, 1948 as well as well. The canoeing program at the London Olympics concluded with Sweden four and Czechoslovakia at three dominant, combining for seven of the nine gold medals in that uh, sport. 49, we have the 16th NFL Chicago All-Star Game, Philadelphia 38 All-Stars, Goose Egg, in front of 93,780 people. 38 to none. Mm. Ouch. Drumming. Yep. 1950, first international game by an NFL team, New York Giants defeated CFL's Ottawa Rough Riders 20 to 6 at Ottawa's Landzone Stadium. Pope Pius XII published encyclical Humani Generis. You know, which what is what does that entail? Let's look this up here really quick. I you know, like I, I've come to really enjoy looking up encyclicals. You know, as I call them, holy memos. Mm -hmm. So, um, concerning some false opinions threatening to undermine the foundations of Catholic doctrine, it primarily discussed uh, new opinions which may originate from a reprehensible desire of novelty and their consequences on the church. Wow, that hit the nail on the head. No like kidding. everybody's trying to be new, unique, original, and in their in their you know attempts to do so, they're damning the entire world. Like and now there there is such a war on Christianity. You know. Uh, yes, I'm sure they were worried about changing. Is this going to change the Catholic doctrine? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, some you know major things have changed. You know, and I would argue it's it's good that you know this one example that I'm going to bring up. Uh, the whole thing on contraceptives, uh -huh. you know, like they used to outright ban you know, no abortions, no contraceptives, no nothing, you know, and you, you, you know, the, like, you know, no pleasuring yourself, none of that. Like, you know, if, if, if you're going to involve that area of the body, it better be for procreation because back in the times it was made, it was all a way to ensure the continuation of survival. You okay. know, if people are just giving into their so instincts, 
Well, my point is nowadays the population is such a great number that that's no longer needed to be a mandate in society. So the Catholic Church has removed. They're, they're still. I think they're still steadfast on anti-abortion. Oh, but as, yeah. But as far as contraceptives and all that stuff to prevent, you know, like you know, birth wow. control and all that stuff. No, because the, the the Vatican actually took a stance. I know this for a fact. Okay. Allowing it. See, I didn't know that. Yes. I didn't know they had accepted contra contraception. Because the population is such a great number, it's no longer necessary. Okay. You know? I so, can argue with you. Yeah. Well, I might be wrong. I might be right. Yeah. I don't know. That's my, that's what I know. I, you know? I, okay. So. I, I didn't know they had uh, accepted contraception. That's... Yeah. That's a great good thing as it's, far as I'm concerned. It's a recent thing. It's like, you know, around 10 years ago or so they did it. Okay. You know, so it's you know, it's not that old. But No, yeah. it definitely wouldn't be that old. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, uh, what do we got here in 1953? <laughs> and Davis? Yeah. And Davison arrives in Miami in her 23-foot boat. Felicity Ann becoming the first woman to sail solo across the Atlantic. Ooh, nice. <clears throat> yeah. We have a couple of uh, cool uh, women feats, you know, today. Like, you know, the first one to, to do a, a car you no know, drive tour, whatever it was, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. What else do we got? We got uh, two more. Uh, 1953 heavy earthquake strikes. I... Ionia's Islands or 35 killed. Yeah. Not good. Nope. Oh, this next one is very not good. Uh. 1954. No, 53. Okay, no, 1953. So Soviet Union conducts secret tests of its first hydrogen bomb. Wow. Yikes. Did you hear that? No, I didn't. Uh, 1953, Soviet Union conducted a secret test of its first hydrogen bomb. Oh, yeah. Yikes. Yeah, not good. Um, uh, Want to take 54? It's baseball. Uh, 1954, <clears throat> Senator Eddie Yost draws his 100th walk for a fifth year in a row. Wow. That's, that is baseball, right? Like, I'm not sure if you can walk in... Rugby yeah. or cricket or whatnot, but uh, yeah, you can watch probably. baseball. I didn't really hear what he said, so uh, he sure. drew his 100th walk for fifth year in a row. Oh yeah, so five years in a row he's done 100 walks, if not more. Yeah, that's that's, that's baseball crazy. they're talking. About. Okay, 1954, uh, 1955. U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower raised minimum wage from 75 cents to one dollar an hour. Mm -hmm. Whoopee! I can buy a pencil. 1959, the first ship firing of a Polaris missile, Observation Island. So, you know, ship, you know, shipbound missile, uh, Polaris missile. Let's uh, let's see what this looks like here. So, the first ship firing. Oh, here we go. Well, this is it uh, from a submarine, but still. Or maybe maybe they did launch it from a submarine. I mean, they have missile launchers on ships, of course. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But. You know, they, they have them on, on submarines. So, uh, 1960, 27th NFL Chicago All-Star Game, Baltimore 32, All-Stars 7. 32? 32 to 7. Why, why are you... No, i just surprised it would be so one-sided on an All-Star Game. Well, the, the previous game, yeah. the, the something to zero was yeah, an All-Star Game, too. True, true, true. So, uh, in front of a crowd of 70,000 people. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's why I made it in because it's you know so one-sided. Yeah. Like you know, I don't, I don't just put in any sports game. It's got to, you got to do something. Uh, we also have U.S. Ralph Boston set a then long jump record of 8.21 meters at the U.S. Olympic Trials, overtaking Jesse Owens's record. Ooh. Yeah. It took a while. Yeah. Back uh, in the 40s to the 60s. Yeah. No, the 30s. I'll be back. He All was, right. It was the 30s. Jesse wasn't? Owens. Yeah. yeah, it was 34, yeah, 35. It was just, yeah. Uh, Pete's found the video. Uh, you f ma got your leisure. What? Oh, he he. Okay, here we go. He DM'd it to me. What is this? Um, Jacob Pete's fat electrician. Oh, oh, this guy again. Uh, how death rays and carrots helped win World War Two. 
All right, well, I will add this into the Underbar section if anybody wants to watch this. You know how I don't like, you know, showcasing other people's work on the show unless it's absolutely necessary. We're already over our first hour. But, yeah, no, if anybody wants to watch this, which I will after the show, I'll post this in the Underbar uh, section. Uh, let's see here. 1960 as well. Echo 1, the first communication satellite, was launched by NASA. Ooh. The first, you know, for telecommunications, yeah. uh -huh. you know, or whatever, stuff like that. Uh, 62, first time two people were in space. Well, okay. All right. Uh, one year later, a Portuguese dictator, Salazar, f uh, f was firm on African colonization. Now, first time uh, two people in space, I'm jumping back here. Yeah. Were those Russians or Americans? Um, well, that's a good question. 1962, first time two people, list of space travelers by first flights. Okay. No, well, I'm, um, go, I'm not that interested. What was this? Uh, dates. We're looking for August 12th, 19... So, okay, so there's... 61 or 2, you said? 62. 12th of August, 1962. There. We have Pavel Pokovich, so that's Soviet Union. Yeah. We have August 11th, uh, Andrian Nikodia, so they're both Russian. Yeah. So there you go. To answer your okay. question, they're both yeah. Russian. Yeah. So another... Another, you know, uh, another check mark of how the Soviet Union kicked their ass in the space race. The first time two of them were up there. Yeah, we you know. sure did. Yeah. We were just talking about Sputnik earlier. Yeah. So, and that's because of Sputnik 5, the vaccine. I, yeah. You know, that's weird. I, I, yeah. Anyway, uh, what do we got in uh, 1964, King? 1964, <clears throat> Mickey Mantle switched his home run record 10th final time. And one game with one going up to 502 feet. Oh, Oof. wow. Whoa, that's a, that's a tape measure job is what they call them. <laughs> yeah. Good luck finding a 500-foot tape measure. <laughs> like, the Mick. What a great baseball player. Yeah. Yeah, baseball legend, you know. Oh, yeah. 65? 65. Dame Elizabeth Lane becomes first... English High Court Judge. First female English High Court Judge. That's cool, you know. Yeah. Uh, another 65. 65. Milwaukee Brewers Baseball Club and the applies for NL franchise. Yeah, Inc. Incorporated. <clears throat> so, you know, they, 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 they form, they're an incorporated thing. Yeah. You know, Inc. Uh, so they applied for a National League franchise. So the Brewers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 1966, the last Beatle concert tour of North America began with two shows at the International Amphitheater in Chicago, Illinois. Mm. I wonder which Chicago this is, the one founded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which Chicago <laughs> are we talking about? Yeah. Uh, we also have Longview, Texas radio station KLUE held a Beatles bonfire to burn Beatles records and memorabilia station uh, and memorabilia. Um, the station was struck by lightning the following day. <laughs> were well, they in protest of the Beatles? Is that it? Well, they were in protest uh, because, you know, right after this, which I don't know why they don't have this one here before this, but the Beatles hold a press conference at the Astor Tower Hotel in Chicago, Illinois. John Lennon apologized for his more popular than Jesus remark. Yeah, that was a big blow up. Yeah, but see, that happened on the same, same day, same year. So these two yeah. events that I just read happened on the same yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, you know, so that's why I think, you know, like this, this radio station held a Beatles bonfire to protest yeah. the Beatles saying that. But then the next day, the, the station was struck by lightning. So is that is that God saying the Beatles were bigger than Jesus? <laughs> you know, like, like what's going on here? That's just saying don't screw with the Beatles. <laughs> you screw with the Beatles, you're screwing with me. Huh. Uh, well, let's see here. Uh. Uh, hey, say what you want about the USSR sending people to space first. One, once they, when they kill the dog, so negative points there. Well, yeah, the yeah. dog did die. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two, find me the USSR on a map. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, well, yeah, we're just talking about a moment in time. They put, and they put all their resources into space because yeah. of pro the propaganda gave them. Meanwhile, the the people. We're, we're looking for running refrigerators and everything else. The people were just screwed. Well, but uh, we didn't put proportionate resources into our space. Oh but yeah, they no, did, like they, 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 they dumped it. They, they dumped did, it for every, sure. It was everything for propaganda but, for them. But Jacob Pete's counterpoint Vietnam. Yeah. Who won? 
<laughs> so, and who's winning the political war right now? The political war right now in the United States? I think the communists. You know, I'll disagree so, with that. Well, I have you know, to disagree. With they that. they got the power right now. That's for sure. So. Uh, 1967, uh, New Orleans Saints' uh, first preseason victory defeated St. Louis 23 to 14. Mm, okay, so, I don't know why that's in there, but okay. Well, I mean, you know, their their first preseason victory, you know, it's just it's more of a something just for the Saints, you know. That I can delete it if you want. That's no, I don't whatever. Care. 1969, the Battle of Bogside. RUC officers, uh, backed by loyalists, entered the Nationalist Bogside in an armored or in armored cars plural, and tried to suppress the riot by using CS gas, a water cannon, and eventually firearms. The almost continuous rioting lasted for two days. Yikes. Yeah. So civil rights stuff. So. And while that was going on, the Boston Celtics sold for an NBA record six million U.S. dollars. <laughs> <laughs> they they don't nothing. even wipe their ass with that anymore. No. So. But what? you gotta remember, they weren't even... You couldn't even... Uh, I don't know about 69 where it started, but you you didn't even get the finals live. You had to uh, watch them on tape delay at midnight. That's annoying. Yeah, so I don't I don't know about 69 where it really changed, but. Hmm. Uh, King, what do we got here in 1970? 1970, Kurt Flood loses his 41 million antitrust suit against baseball. Ooh. Ooh. This is huge because this gives us baseball it is today. This gives us free agency for baseball players and everything. Yeah, before Flood really started these lawsuits, you were basically owned by the <clears throat> the uh, franchise that signed you. They would trade you when they didn't want you or they would keep you forever. So I so guess... So baseball today is because of, of the foundation Kurt Flood set. So I, I guess you can say he did nothing to Kurt the Flood. Oh. I have to make a joke I out know, of something. I don't know if you think it's a, a good thing or not that a baseball player makes 50, 60, 70 million a year. You know, maybe it's gone too far the other way. I don't know. You know, like, I think I am the, the <coughs> I think I am the pun version of Wade Wilson. <laughs> I don't know if I can go that far. Um, Pizza saying, have to look back into it. It's been a minute, but pretty sure. Uh, what are you talking about? Vietnam? Oh, yeah, if I remember correctly, we got an unconditional surrender from Vietnam. The later years of the war was a sucker punch. So, so like, so we surrendered or they surrendered? We're gonna. I need you on the show, Pete. Like, I need you on the show. Like, maybe during the weekends if you have time. I, I know you're a busy guy, and I appreciate you watching. You know, believe me, um, and interacting. His notes are good. Yeah, no, like Pete, we need you on the show, man. You, you are awesome. Uh, what else do we got here? 1970. Well, speaking of Vietnam, what do we got? Uh, actually, no, we have this one here. What else do we have? Uh, Ian, 72. Uh, Ian and Greg Chappell both scored centuries in same test cricket innings. Uh, interesting. Cricket. Should have known. Oh, so they surrendered to us, and then we kept it going. Wow, that's not surprising. Peace, I'm going to have to have you on talk show. But, yeah, but speaking of Vietnam, we have something here about Vietnam. So, 72. 1972, last American comic, ground troops leave Vietnam. All right. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. so that. <clears throat> 74, coming at us fast. 74, Nolan Ryan strikes out 19 and walks only two as Angels top the Red Sox 4-2. Huh. Yeah. Yep. Uh, 74 uh, is... Go ahead. more than two strikeouts an inning. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, I was thinking 1974, Yankees, Mickey Mantle, and Whitey Ford become first teammates inducted to the Hall of Fame on the same day. Ooh, Ooh, Whitey nice. Ford was a Yankee pitcher. Ah. That's pretty cool. You know, two teammates at the same yeah. time. Like, yeah. It's like, you know, getting assigned a group project with your buddy, you know, in, in school. <laughs> 1976, the first approach and lands test, ALT, of Orbiter Enterprise. Oh, I, I, oh, I, Orbiter, land, I guess, are they, like, landing on asteroids or something? First, it doesn't say first land test? The first approach and lands test. So they're approaching and landing. 
Now this is not but about. But they're testing it. Yeah, of Orbiter Enterprise, the Orbiter. What is the Orbiter Enterprise? Oh, oh, would it be the the space shuttle? Because I know that the Enterprise is a space shuttle. Orbiter Enterprise. Let's see. Yeah, the space shuttle. Yeah. So okay, they're so testing, they're testing landing it. Okay. It wasn't up in space, but they got they took it up in the air. And okay. then they're testing the landing capabilities to make sure it works. And so they're not testing the land on the asteroid. They're testing to come back home. Yeah, of Okay, course. that makes sense. 76 as well. A Christian militia uh, conquered... Hold on, where is it? 1976. Christian militia conquered a Palestinian group. Tel al Zatar. 2,000 are killed. This is... It's, it's spelled conqueror. Christian militia conqueror Palestinian camp. Or conquered a Palestinian camp, or the Palestinian camp. Tell Al, this is written so weirdly, like two thousand killed. Boy, so a Christian about. militia killed two thousand Palestinians. It sounds like. So, okay. Uh, Nineteen seventy-seven for the second straight day. Oakland's Manny Sanguilin foiled a no-hit bid. Jeez, mm. really? Yeah. 77 as well. High Energy Astronomy Observ Observatory 1, HIAO, was launched into Earth's orbit by NASA. Mm. All right, so, you know, testing out energy in our electromagnetic bubble, it sounds like. Uh, we also have a space shuttle Enterprise made first atmospheric test flights. So I guess, like, they're yeah. test flying it. But uh -huh. you can't fly the space shuttle. You launch it, and then you glide it back in. It's not like an airplane. So, well, it's designed to be an airplane so you can bring it back. Yeah, the well, space it, shuttle it, goes into space and you bring it back and it lands. But it glides in. It's not like flying in under its own power. It's a glider. Well, it's more of a glider, yes. But yeah. it still has to have its own power to land, I think. No, no. Well, I guess it doesn't. Absolutely not. It doesn't have to. You don't, right. you, you don't need power to land. You need brakes. Right. <laughs> You're yeah. right. You don't need power. Yeah. So I don't know if it had power or not. I think it did. Well, it has its own power, but that's, you know, just for maneuvering in space, right. but not for thrust. Right. right. You know? Like, yeah, it has some big-ass rockets, you know? You don't need like, power to come back in, that's for sure. No, no. Well, that's what orbit is. It's falling, you know? Uh, 1978, Aaron Marshall completed a record shower of 336 hours. Was that, is it standing in the shower? Like, see, I don't know what, what is, that is. I have no clue. I'm, I'm going to just do a surface-level scratch of that article, see if anything comes up. Um, breaks the longest shower. Okay, is this gonna tell me anything? Uh, it is a shower, like an actual like bathing shower. Like you, you see there a picture yeah, see here. It. You can move on now. <coughs> I don't so, care. The guy is clean. What are I telling you? Huh. you know, uh, yeah, that, that's a that's a clean record. You know, <laughs> like, oh. 1978, China and Japan signed a peace treaty. That's pretty big, right there. Yes. Yeah, we also have the International Commentary Explorer, ICE, spacecraft was launched to study solar wind. Hmm. Mm. Uh, 78, NFL New England Patriots wide receiver Daryl Stringley suffered a spinal cord injury, leaving him with incomplete uh, quadriplegia from a hit by Oakland Raiders' Jack Tatum in a preseason exhibition game. Oh, boy, that's... That's, and, uh, that's the awful side of football. Well, the, the whole... The whole side of football is an awful side. Uh, King and I, we were just watching a couple days ago a video about the condition, you know, caused by the, oh, you know, yeah. the brain and everything. The concussion. Uh, CRTs. They suppress the information to keep making money. They knew, you know, the owners and, and all that stuff, the mucky mucks of the NFL, yeah. they knew it was causing brain damage. They knew it was causing yeah. this. They, they stifled information to keep making a buck. And now it's finally coming out and everything. So anybody who plays football or has played it and everything, you know, I hope to God they sue and bleed the NFL dry. You know, like they, they got to do that. Like, because it just, it, it, it's one thing to know about it. It's another thing to suppress it. You know, like. But there's stuff that isn't talked about. And I'm thinking of a great uh, San Diego Chargers uh, linebacker. I can't think of his name right here. But he had all kinds of mental problems afterwards from all the concussions. And he finally committed suicide. Well, let's see here. So none of that Junior gets Seo? About. Yeah, Junior Seo. Yeah, Trina Ball, Junior Seo, Jr. Okay. Junior Seo, yeah. Yeah, that's tragic. Yeah. Oh. And that's never talked about. Well, of course not. So, well, we did. Yeah. So, yeah. Kudos to his family. Yep. 
1979, Iranian press censored, or uh, the Iranian press censors start a massive book burning. So the censors, so the people in charge of censorship started book burning. Well, I mean, if the shoe fits, you know, that's censorship yeah. book burning. So, wow, Iran, here we go. Oh. Oh, of course. Yep. What do we got in 1980? Nicaragua. <clears throat> Nineteen eighty, Nicaragua celebrates the end of their national literary crusade—a massive effort of over five months that reduced illiteracy from fifty percent to twelve percent. So, you know, wow. education. Though, so we, they reduced illiteracy. So they're bringing in the literacy. So teach the the amount of people who know how to read is increasing. So that's good. Yeah. They just had a little earthquake. So that's what that was. Yeah. I didn't even feel it. I just saw everything moving. Yeah. I, I guess I was like in the middle of movement. Yeah. So that's why you had that look on your face. Yeah. I was wondering, like, are you okay? <laughs> like, oh. Wow. Well, so hopefully coming, and then we finally got here. So we just had a little earthquake, people. Could be a big one from a long ways off. Yeah. You know what? Like, uh, let's see here. Um, California. The earthquake map. Let's look this up here really quick. I didn't even feel it. Recent earthquakes. Let's check this out here. So, let me bigger yeah, this. I think you were rocking back and forth. I don't know if it's so current now if they'd have it up yet. Oh, no, they would have it up. Uh, last hour. Um, let's see here. Can I increase? Can I? There's Oops, been a bunch of going on up in this uh, Fresno area. We're down here somewhere. Oh. Well, a micro earthquake occurred August twelfth, two a.m. So that's not that's not right now. No. Um, would this be a better map here? Here we go. This is better. We have a red dot right here. Um, Twelve twenty. Yeah, that's that's right now. Yeah. Four four kilometers southwest of South Pasadena. Ooh, pretty close. Yeah. Is this it right here? Yeah, that's yeah. it right here. Yeah. So, huh? Yeah, that's the. So that's about uh, 50, 70 miles away, 50, 60 miles away. Pasadena. Like Pasadena. Yeah. Maybe less than fifty. Yeah, it's not not that far. Oh, it's on the other side of LA from us. Okay, I see yeah. where I yeah. see where we're at now. I recognize this area very yeah. well. Yeah. Used to go here to, for to do Pokemon Go quite a bit. So, anyway, let's get back on track with history. Uh, what else do we got here? Another nineteen eighty signature. Signature of Montevideo Treaty establishing the Latin American Inauguration Association. Uh, Integration Association. So, what is this? Latin America Integration Association. Um, uh, is an international and regional scope organization. It was created on yada yada, yada replacing the Latin American Free Trade Association. Okay, LAFTA. Currently, it has 13 member countries, and any of the Latin American states may apply for a session. <coughs> okay. Uh, it, the development of it, its objectives are the development of the integration process developed within the framework of the ALDI aims uh, at promoting a, the harmonious, uh, the harmonious and balanced socio-economic development of the region, and its long-term objective in is a gradual and progressive establishment of a Latin American single market. Uh oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Amero, the Euro, it's coming. Yeah. Here we go. So They're trying to duplicate the United States. That's what the Euro did. They said, let's combine yeah. and be more economically powerful yeah. like the United States is. Yeah, and now we have a bunch of, you know, like countries of questionable governments uniting to form a unified currency. That's very alarming. Yeah, it, so... Uh, what else do we got here in 1980? My other monitor froze, so I'm going to be doing some technical stuff here. <laughs> Plugging and unplugging, huh? Yep. 1980 Warner Bros. Records. Wait. Uh, yeah, yeah, Warner Bros. Records released One Trick Pony, the fifth solo studio album by American singer songwriter Paul Simon. It features a song late in the evening and was accompanied by a dramatic film of the same name, written starring Simon. Huh. All right, then. <clears throat> Move this over here. All right. Uh, what else do we got here? 1981, IBM introduced its first personal computer, PC and PC DOS version 1.0. I remember DOS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, we also have John Erickson of the U.S. became the first to triple cross the English Channel in 38 hours and 27 minutes. Triple? Or, you went three times? Or 38, it can't be 38 minutes. No, no. You know, no. so 38 hours, 27 minutes. So, yeah, so it went back, came back, and then, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, 1983, General Manuel Norega became a commander of a Panamanian army. Yeah. And later became the Panamanian gen general, and you know, well, I guess that's a commander, and then he became a dictator. Yeah. So, and yeah, right. we actually worked with him uh, because he kind of had the canal a little bit, you know, under hostage. So, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I can't remember, but didn't Reagan some have some tumbling with him in some way? Uh, probably. And but maybe overthrew him or something. I can't remember. I'm just talking off the top of my head. I have no clue. Oh. So. Um, they took him down in some way, and I can't remember who, what, or when, or where. I have no clue. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to fix this stupid autofocus again while you're talking. Um, but uh, 1984, the Braves defeated the Padres 5-3. to three. It features two brawls and 19 ejections. Whoa. That's that's a... Yeah. That, that's a, that's a, uh, that, that game turn, is turning into football or something, you know? They got pissed about something. Yeah. Uh, 84 as well, Carlos Lopez of Portugal won the men's marathon at the Los Angeles Olympics in 2 hours, 9 minutes, and 21 seconds. An Olympic record that stood for 24 years. Yeah. Wow. 84 Olympics. Remember them well. Yep. That's the one I was talking about, the, watching the torch go by. Yeah. And uh, last but not least for 84, Harmon Killebrew, Rick Farrell, Don Drysdale, Pee Wee Reese, and Louis uh, Apriaccio are inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in, of course, Cooperstown, New York. Yeah. Oh. Louis Aparicio. Ah, all right. Uh, what do we have here in 85, good Sir King? Uh, 1985, 100, 512 people die with Japan's Airlines Flight 123 crashes into Ueno, Japan, the second deadliest aviation disaster of all time. Oh, wow. And uh, you have another uh, baseball 185 here. 1985, Baltimore Orioles with Gross and L. Sheets are six to hit uh, consecutive pitch home runs. Ah. Now, we are approaching our hour and a half, so if it's all right with you, I'm just going to spitball through all of these until I hit 2,000. Um, you good. So let's see here. Uh, 1986, uh, Iran fired a missile at a refinery near Baghdad. Uh, Iraq raided an Iranian terminal at Syria Island, severely, severely disrupting Iranian exports. So, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, 86, the Boston Red Sox defeated Tigers 9 to 4 for American League record 23rd consecutive win at home. 1990, 12th annual Macy's Tapomania. Uh, what the hell is a Tapomania? <laughs> the Macy's Tapomania. Like, let me look that up here really quick. I think I know what this was, because like, I remember looking this up a while ago, but. Uh, day 213, happy birthday, Dad. January, what is this? Um, this is something. Um, okay, this is a whole blog post. Okay, but what is the Tabo Um, they set a record with 6,708 people attending. This is a weird photograph. Uh, so I, I guess people just go in there and just tap dance or something? Like, they just no tap idea. around? Stomp the yard? I don't know. 1990, Iraqi President Saddam Hussein said he is ready to resolve Gulf crisis if Israel withdrew from occupied territories. All right. 1991, creditors voted to support Greyhound bus reorganization plan. While that was going on, heavy metal man Metallica released their fifth studio album, Metallica, and debuted at number one on Billboard 200 charts. And I'm going to go ahead and like just end the show here because I'm getting I'm getting violently hungry. So, yeah, as you can see as I'm scrolling, there's a substantial amount of history that we were going to bring to you that's not even close to the amount that even, like, what happened on this date. Right out of so, time. Yeah. So, you know, that concludes the show. Once again, please check the underbar of the description below for any links you may be interested in. You know, not only just stuff involving Omni Coalition, but, you know, our sources. I implore you to go check it out because the amount of stuff that happens on a daily basis in history that's recorded is just mind-boggling. But, yeah, we're not just here on Rumble and on YouTube. We're on BitChute, Odyssey, and various other places. Go check out our link tree. Anyway, for your dose of, uh, for your dose of past events daily... 
We stream every day, or at least try to, uh, 11 in the morning Pacific time. If you want to catch our schedule and our other lineup, because we do have other shows, go check out uh, the link, you know, the uh, the underbar, you know, the description section. For all of you and all of us, I am Aosander. King's Refuge. Golden Loon. Nephew, come on, nephew person. Maybe he's not there. Huh. Well, That's anime cool. preferred. And, of course, you, viewer, are you. Thank you very much for joining us. And until you catch us next time, whenever it is, wherever it is, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Toodles! Toodles. All right. In the stream here. Yeah, I got to go play that one. In the stream here.